Dallas County Commissioner candidate, Mr. Michael Phillips, is in the building. Yes, He's I'm in the house. In di for District 3. Look, this has been a week. Yes, it has. Yes, I mean, has. and this is crunch week for you anyway, so I'm pretty sure you didn't need a whole lot of extra drama and extra attention to, because you got work to do. No, we needed attention because the mainstream media has not given us our fair share and to let the citizens know that there's two other candidates, mainly Michael B. Phillips, that's in this race for the second time. Okay. Because I want to empower the citizens with economic empowerment. Okay, so Mr. Phillips, let's just catch everybody up that, that was living under a rock, you know, because of course we do also have some people that are listening from all over the world. Yeah. So on Monday at the Gospel Radio Station of Dallas, the stellar nominated Gospel Radio Station of Dallas. Yes. Um, a interesting altercation took place when it was supposed to be a civil debate discussing the issues to decide who should be the better candidate so the world would be able to listen and to make a decision for themselves. It turned out into a brawl. Yeah. A street fight. That's that's Boy, no. <laughs> yeah. It turned yeah. out into a, a very interesting thing. Um, current incumbent Dallas County Commissioner John Wiley Price mm -hmm. as well as Councilman Dwayne Carraway got into a very interesting fisticuff situation. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to be honest and go ahead and say it. It's not the way civic leaders should it's handle behave. You know, they shouldn't handle themselves in that matter. It's just really shocking and very surprising because I was expecting something completely, completely different. And so Mr. Michael Phillips and his team actually covered it all. And so we get to we got an inside scoop. Everybody yeah, knows yeah. I love scoops. Scoop. <laughs> so we're going to talk <laughs> about that brawl because I want to hear first, you know, hand because everybody wants to know what happened. They want to know what the cameras didn't catch. So we're going to be asking you about that. Let's just get into things. Um, the This forum, this on-air debate, which is something different that hasn't been done. Normally debates are held on TV, yes. but KHVN decided, well, that's the way we perceive it, to do a over-the-air radio debate. Whose idea was that? How did you get the call that there was going to be an on-the-air debate? Well, Robert Ashley does it, uh, Dr. Ashley does it every election year because our community listens to the community forum. Right. And when it should have been an opportunity that we could have you know, those that had a plan could have presented a plan mm -hmm. because I know I have a detailed, concise, comprehensive plan that can go into place on day one when I become the next Dallas County Commissioner of District 3. And so they, the citizens were robbed that the other day because I do believe that it was a political uh, strategy for Mr. Dwayne Curlway to look stronger than he did at Monday Night Politics against a very strong uh, community leader in uh, Commissioner John Wally Price. And so um, I just think it backfired on him because he has never crossed that bridge. There's a lot of personal history that's there that we really didn't need to know about. That's but true. now the whole world knows about it. And right. It does nothing for our community. It does nothing for the babies that are, are not eating out of school. It does nothing for those that's looking for jobs. It does nothing for those that's looking for, you know, primary health care relationships with their doctors. And these are things I'm bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. And so the citizens were robbed that opportunity by gossip, basically. And so it was just a, uh, just a major injustice dealt to the citizens on Monday by the hands of... I, you know, you have to give Commissioner Price 25% and give Dwayne Carraway 75%. And so both of them did not act the way, we're not at the parliament somewhere where they are used to fighting right. as elected officials. Right. And so we usually, you know, I give credit to Dr. Martin Luther King. He was able to use diplomacy. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why he can keep the peace marches going because when he sat down at the table with the presidents of the United States, he could convince them and then go back and motivate the people to march with him to get things done. This is not how you get things done in this Dallas, Texas. This is definitely not how do you get things done. So now, I'll have to ask a question. How long were you guys there before the altercation actually took place? Okay, Robert Ashley, Dr. Ashley asked us to be there about 12, 20. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, Commissioner Price and uh, Cedric Davis got there about 12, 15. I got there about 12, 20. Mm -hmm. uh, the show began, I believe, at about mm, 12, 25, 12, 30. Uh, Dwayne Carraway was late as usual, mm -hmm. and so because he he's always trying to be you know uh, fashionably late, mm -hmm. and as an elected official or someone that held a seat, you need to be on time because we're setting an example for children. Mm -hmm. And so when he came in, you know of course we had a, already had our opening statements, and so Dr. Ashley gave him an opportunity to give his opening statement, and his opening statements were very antagonistic, where he stated that he would be challenging the character 
of two of us that were on the radio. Okay, okay. Now, a lot of us have seen the video. We saw the video that was directly posted on your account. Yes. What, you know, I've heard you say in a lot of press conferences that your team, they record everything. You know, even when we're here today, they record everything. So my question is, where is the beginning of the tape? Well, it caught us off guard. Okay. See, my team is only supposed to record my responses. Okay. Okay, and so while I was not the one talking, and so when we went on commercial break, no one was spinning. Okay. And so when it erupted, when uh, Commissioner Price, after he asked him, you know, if you're going to tell the story about Sandbrex, tell the facts. And of course, that irritated Dwayne Carraway, and he made a uh, F-U-N comment, mm -hmm. and then of course, Commissioner Price came back and called him a B or a punk or whatever right. you want to say. Both of them, to me, were out of order. And so that's why you see Cedric and myself, mainly me, keeping Commissioner Price, who's a black belt, mm -hmm. from getting to Dwayne. Right. And Dwayne was really trying to get out of him, and I don't think he wanted to do that. Right. Now, you said this, this all, the whole altercation, and we've read a lot, started over Sand Branch. But no one really, there's a lot of people who don't know what, know what that is. So can you explain to us, what are we talking about? Sand Branch is a community uh, that's within Siegelville but it's unincorporated, okay. meaning it has not been annexed into Seagalville nor Dallas. Okay. So it, it's the responsibility of the county of Dallas to make sure that those people uh, have the amenity that, that they need. And so from what Commissioner Price is saying, that FEMA has come in and said that it's floodplain. And so the 100-year flood has already hit Dallas right. in 2008. It didn't flood. And so it leaves a question mark to the citizens of Sand Branch if it didn't flood why are we in a pull-up plane? And so uh, it leaves some doubt there what is the motivation behind not getting those people water nor sewer. And and so it leaves a big question up. So Dwayne Kerway basically told uh, Commissioner Price that he was in it for a land grab, mm -hmm. which would be a crime. Right. Now, you said you posted the video because you felt like people need to know, especially the millennials. I know if you pay attention to your campaign, you target mostly that millennial age. You're very social media active. You're always doing live videos on Facebook. You do Periscope. You're on Instagram, Twitter. You know, these are things that sometimes people in local uh, counties and local elections don't think of. So did, did you sit down with your team and decide, should we release it or should we not? No, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the CEO of my campaign. I made an executive decision because if the shoe was on the other foot, mm -hmm. because they know that I'm serious and I'm passionate about, you know, doing something positive for my community. If it was young Micah acting a buffoon, mm -hmm. they would have uploaded it. Mm -hmm. And so instantly I knew that the people needed to know and be informed that these, this is how our elected officials Dwayne Carraway brags about being an ex-mayor pro tem, the ex-mayor of the city of Dallas, where well, you did not act like one That's very on true. Monday. That's very true. Now, I, you haven't all received all positive attention, of course, for uploading no. the video. Um, let's talk about some of the negatives. Uh, we live in a day and age where we have children who fight in school, and they, you know, as soon as somebody, one of their counterparts start fighting in high school, they start recording it, and it's uploaded on different sites and the things of that sort. Some people have said that you're not setting a good example for the children. What do you say? Well, first of all, we are not children. Everybody that was in that room was grown. Right. And so, of course, I think that parents need to censor what their kids are looking at. In, in news today, you need to monitor what your kids, but for the adults, we needed to see it. We need, because these, you, these guys should not have acted like that. And so I feel like the negative the attention that we're getting it's okay because it's 10 to 1 to the negative to the positive. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of calls mm -hmm. when, I, when I was on my way to the Dallas Police Department to get my deposition. Okay. They told me, I had calls where people were saying, this is your chance to get competition price. You can win this. But if I don't win it the right way, I don't want to win it. Okay. Come on. And so people asked me to lie and bury the commissioner. I got I to gotta deal with God on that. Right. You know, so I sided, my daddy said another thing, if you're on the side of wrong, you got to side with right. right. And so I stayed with the facts, I stayed with the truth, he did not dangle, and he did not choke that young man. Who called the police? Well, did the station call the police, or did uh, well, Wayne Carraway call the police? The station ended up having to call the police because they asked the Wayne Carraway to leave the premises. Mm -hmm. They asked him not to come back into the studio. 
and he refused to listen to them. But then after the math, after math, you know, we had made our final statements because Robert Ashley, Dr. Ashley, uh, ended the uh, show early. Right. You can hear the team up here. We say, hey, let's call, let's call the police. Let's let's report him to the police. Report who? I mean, the commissioner was not the aggressor, mm -hmm. and so that's just like when a woman calls the police on a man with domestic violence, and the man is not the aggressor in our community. That's another problem. Right. The, the, the minority male goes to jail after someone makes the allegation and they to me they try to play on so many things that's a huge issue in our problem and use that to their advantage. Well, well I can't say whether it's sincere or God give us the ability to judge a man's heart, okay. but it probably wasn't the best way to write the letter okay. if you're trying to, because I'm looking at this as an opportunity uh, for our, our community to begin healing. Mm -hmm. uh, because anytime you have bloodshed and this was in, in the figure figuratively a uh, role that blood was shed, you have healing. And so uh, a cyst came to, to the head that revealed bacteria. So now it's time to allow that to heal. Mm -hmm. And let's move on from here. Let's unify. That's why I called my first press conference, because it's time for us to heal. It's time for the individuals that's really involved for many years and maybe decades. It's time for them to learn a lot of healing so our community can heal. And so when you look at, and I was going to say this earlier, when you look at the continuity that's supposed to happen between the county commissioner and the city councilman that's looking to bring projects and economic development to our community, now you can kind of almost see why we're stifled. Right. Because Commissioner Price should have been working along with the marriage plan to grow south, but he's been absentee because maybe he didn't like Dwayne Carraway. And so we have, you know, received the blunt of that, uh, that lack of, because since 2012, when I ran the first time, there's been so much development that our community has not received not one contract. We look at the $177 million that was set aside for minorities, and we have not received any of it. Over half of it has went to uh, Caucasian female companies, and we haven't received anything. Now, Mr. Phillips, you are a family man. You are a pastor, yes. you are a ex-firefighter, and this is your second go-round at Dallas County Commissioner. What, uh, what made you decide to take another go at it? Because I just know the importance of county commissioner, and it's not that, you know, if you look at President Obama, he lost his first ever election. Mm -hmm. I think to, to me, I, I learned more from losing than I you do in winning, and I take that from my sports world of, you know, uh, playing at Kimball High School, uh, being an uh, athlete, All-American, academic All-American, and then going off to the University of Southern California where we, we took Kimball from a losing era to a winning era. We went to USC from a losing era to a Rose Bowl championship era. And so when you take that mentality and you, you learn from the, your, your losses, I learned a lot. That's why I'm, I'm using a very low-budget uh, uh, campaign project or uh, campaign uh, budget and so I've taken about four thousand dollars and ran this election and uh, people I think ought to appreciate that and I learned that from last time I spent eighty thousand dollars of my own money last time and so uh, to me if the people are not giving financially it's up to the people to say they're ready for change and that's my different approach I want the people to get excited and I think it's happening right at the right time right in the nick of time. We only have a few more minutes. I want to make sure what is it that you want the people to know that you definitely want them to know that why Micah B. Phillips is the man for a job, is the man that is willing to bring a new day to Dallas County. Well, I just want them to know that, you know, my blood runs deep, my family blood runs deep, the Phillips family, and, and I wouldn't uh, be doing any uh, respect if I did not talk about my grandfather, late Dr. Reverend uh, C.J.R. Phillips Sr., and then my dad, the late Dr. Reverend A.D.R. Phillips Sr., they taught me a work ethic. Mm -hmm. And uh, Commissioner Price has a work ethic. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a work ethic that I believe that will enhance what he has done. I'm not in competition with his work ethic. I think when you have work ethic, it's impeccable that you, you know, you make that. It's infectious. And so I want our community to know that I'm going to be raising the expectations of our community to begin to have a work ethic and kind of remove ourselves from that welfare-minded state mm -hmm. because welfare is worse than slavery. Mm 
Mm -hmm. it, it shackles your mind and it lynches your work ethic. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be able to bring that attitude that the strong males in my family have infused in me. And then I will implement my plan, which is to strive for term limits that will force me to mentor the, the future generations to come, to fight to bring a level one medical trauma center to the southern part of Dallas. It was, okay, it's great that we have a state of art of Art Parkland Hospital north of the Trinity River, but I thought it was a travesty not to at least start building one or planning to build one in the southern part of Dallas because, you know, it, we don't have the medical relationships. People are dying when they go to Charlton Methodist, not because Charlton Methodist is a bad hospital. They're not a level one, meaning the surgeons, not the specialists, are on hand. And so your loved ones deserve better than that. My community deserves better than that. And so when you have a stroke, you have a heart attack, that you don't need to be sitting there waiting while they're playing around with you and your medical bill is going up. And they're not telling you, well, we're waiting on the surgeon to get here. And your loved one end up dying in charge. So I'm going to rectify that. And then, of course, we're going to get the end of the port going back. We're going to make sure that you have an investment into whatever we decide as the community we need. I'm going to set that infrastructure into place. You know, the county commissioner cannot be a developer, but he can set the environment or the tone. I call it bid friendly, business friendly, investor friendly, and developer friendly. And on day one, that atmosphere changes. I present that plan where uh, the citizens can invest. I'm going to, it's some unique things that goes on in America, like in Arkansas, they, they add a little optional tax line where you can contribute to public safety, I'm going to uh, uh, ask that they put an optional tax line that, it, say for instance, if your house is $100,000, mm -hmm. that 10% of your house then will be what? $10,000. Mm -hmm. That you have an option to put that into shares so we can begin to build what we need. We're not going to be begging people to build in the southern part of Dallas. Okay. We are going to do it. And that's what I have to offer as your next Dallas County Commission. I like that you say it with a smile. <laughs> yes. I'm excited. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Now, you are a pastor. Are you going to continue your pastorship at your church if you are elected? Oh, of course. Yes, I'm going to continue that because, you know, I, I was ordained in my mother's womb to be a pastor. I love uh, giving people because I don't go to church anymore. I bring church. And so uh, I've taught all of the parishioners that I have that that's the way to go. And so I don't think it's a conflict of interest because when it talks about separation of state and church, it's meaning that the state cannot come in and take over the church, but mm -hmm. we definitely need spiritually minded people in these political office, not so we can uh, press upon people our religious uh, preferences, but so that we can, you know, have some standards, some morals, some some uh, humanity ideas. And I'm going to be telling people, I launched it the other day and I repeat it on this show, I'm going to be starting what we call the Humanity Party. If you look at okay. what's going on in America, the extreme right and extreme left, but if you look at humanity in a whole, we, we, we agree on the middle things. And so if we begin to focus on humanity, that will begin to not only bring Dallas together, but it will bring Texas together. Who cares if you're red or, or, or blue? It's about humanity, and we all bleed red. And so I'm going to be launching that, and we're getting together as I speak. I have some big ideas, not only for Dallas County, but for the state of Texas and America. Well, we wish you the, the best of luck. And, um Please don't be a stranger to Let's Chat Live with Miss T or to DFWIRadio.com. We thank you so much for coming in and just, you know, sharing with the little people of the world. Yes, thank you. I'm a little person too. I'm little, you know. I'm a little person. I don't want, my dad said, there's no big eyes and a, no, no, no little you. Right. And so that's the mentality I want to bring into the county where, where you're not serving me as the county commissioner. I'm going to serve you. <laughs>